friends so it's been a while since I've shown my face um, but I wanted to show you our new studio I was actually just watching back the previous studio tour we did um, when actually I'll show you when we were in just in this like little outbuilding um, by our house so this is where I was working before so I was working on like kind of where this table is that's our house and then I had my wheel in here in the kiln in here which is now um, storage and a freezer so oh hello parcel um, interesting oh yes we ordered some taps for the bathroom <laughs> um, yeah so I thought it would be a good time to show you the new studio um, we got it uh, built last year around September 2021 so um but I've, I've actually just finally got it how i want it when you move into a new space you kind of want to kind of get a feel for it and i've moved stuff around loads so um yeah i thought it'd be good to, and i've actually just cleaned it so <laughs> this is a good time to show you guys the new space um so it's actually at our other end of the garden or oh, maybe i'll just show you veg beds corn i love corn i just think it looks so pretty all the corn and um yeah our lettuce went a bit mad it's all like kind of gone a bit over now we couldn't eat it fast enough so we've planted just a few more <laughs> um so yeah i think uh, we have two buildings one is the main studio building and there's one where we keep the kilns because they're firing um pretty much all the time and they release like lots of toxic fumes we thought it was best to keep it away from the studio so I'll show you that first but I'm gonna help I'm gonna ask the Harry Potter for some help so he's gonna be cameraman today <laughs> so we keep the kilns in this little summer house that was already here when we moved into the place but we have two kilns one is big one is medium small this is a plug-in so you can just plug it into your normal mains it's the eco top the Rhoda eco top 43 liter and then we recently upgraded to big alice so this is a scut kmt 1018 and is i think it's like a hundred and 35 30, yeah 35 liters something like that so it's amazing so much more space and they're quite cool they you have like um a touch pad but yeah this is like you have to have it all wired in it's still single phase but yeah it um, draws a bit more electricity so yeah that's great so this everything lives here and um oh yeah i might just show you just quickly we just have these shelves and i just keep anything kiln related here we just got a log book so guys it's good to log your usage which I haven't done, I've only just started doing it, so <laughs> that's something I'm going to try to do more so that it kind of gives you an idea when you need to change the elements next and how many firings you've done and it's good to do like a blank firing with nothing in it from time to time I think maybe like every 10 firings it's good to do that so that's going to help me keep track of that <laughs> and then I just have all my props like these little jumper things and all my cones here so everything is um, easy access for the kiln. Um, so this is the new studio. Um, we, yeah, we built it in September, so it's coming up to a year now of actually like being in there. But we have moved things around like really a lot and bought shelving, like different shelving. So this is the first time I'm really like happy with it. And it was a total car crash. Like we went on holiday and I just left the studio in a complete mess. So I've just tidied it and cleaned it. So it's a good time to do a tour. So this is, I'll link the, um, this is like a log cabin, I'll link it down below. It's three metres by four metres. So yeah, it's still quite compact, but it's good just for me. Um, I think at some point we'll build another, probably another studio in the future at some point, but this is really good um, to work in at the moment. Um, I don't really know where to start, but maybe we start at the table because I do a lot of hand building. So this is like dependent on what kind of pottery you do that is, the kind of space you want to work with because I do a lot of kurunuki so it's carving these kind of hand built pots so I think if you do a lot of hand building you kind of want to have a big space um, if you're just throwing on the wheel you can kind of stack all your pots up on shelves and you don't really need like such a big table 
and it means that I can put all of my big glazes underneath, which is great. Yeah, maybe I'll just start from this side, we'll work around, and then I'll show you what's underneath. So yeah, I have my wheel, so my pottery wheel. Um, I have the rotor wheel, which is great, and it's adjustable, which is really good, especially because I throw standing up, um, so I have quite a sore back. I had a slip disc at some point, and then I had an operation to remove it, so throwing sitting down is just like impossible for me, so it was really important to be able to put the wheel up. So we just use these concrete blocks to raise it up. So this is the kind of height I work at with my pedal and kind of wanting it distance so I can still use my body weight when I'm throwing, but it's um, at like a kind of really good height for me. So I really recommend if you're having a sore back from doing pottery and throwing, really like helps to prop your wheel up. And I didn't really have to relearn like throwing. It was just a few times just to get used to it, but it does, didn't really like affect how I was throwing. I throw exactly the same. It's just much more comfortable for me now. And so when I'm for the wheel, I have a mirror. I have my pottery gauge. This is from, oh, he's the guy that makes this, Samuel. Samuel something, do you remember his name? No. Yeah, I'll link it down below anyway. He makes these gauges, which is great. And I have a mirror because doing that, if you don't have a mirror, doing that to see your form really like messes up your back and your neck and everything. So it's so good to be able to see what I'm throwing in the mirror. My rulers, I always measure things. And then I just have my most popular items which are on pre-order. So I have to make sure I throw it to exactly the same uh, dimensions every time I just keep what I'm throwing basically up here so I can just see it as I throw. And this side I keep all of my Hartley and Noble bats. So this is just the bat system I use um, for throwing. I'll link them down below. They're like, they're great. They make basically lots of different types of bats for lots of different types of wheels. They can custom make it to your wheel. If you don't have bat pins, they have systems that go over your wheel. So I really recommend looking them up and I think they're worldwide now. So that's cool. Um, yeah, so I use their Russian doll bat system, which is basically this goes on your bat pins. And it has two basically like adapters inserts. So you can either, wait first I'll show you this. So you can either have the large size. So I throw my dishes or any large items on this. Or you can use their inserts if you want to go for their medium size. And then obviously this is the smallest size. So I use the smallest size for mugs and that kind of thing. And it's actually really good because the size of them, um, I usually throw to that diameter. So it's really easy for me to be like consistent over time. I usually like when I'm throwing something, I'll measure how far away it is from the edge of that bat so that I can make sure that I throw um, uh, to the same every time between batches. So yeah, these are great. They're a little bit pricey, but they last really well. They don't warp. They're made out of like this type of MDF that's really good. Oh yeah, and one last thing here, I have a diamond core grinding disc because the clay we use a lot is quite groggy and it has like bits in it, especially when it's fired, it's really rough. So I make sure that I sand all my pieces kind of using this um, just so it's nice and smooth. It also helps if you do actually get any drips of glaze, you can just sand them off. Um, pretty easy as long as it's like not stuck to your shelf. <laughs> And then, so yeah, so then I keep all of my, so I use three different clays um, and I keep the buckets for their reclaim just down here and it means when I reclaim my clay, so I use these plaster bats to reclaim my clay and I pop it on there to dry out until it becomes the same consistency as it does out of the bag um, and then I wedge it up on the plaster bats. So it's basically just the same as plaster similar to Pastor of Paris where it um, absorbs all the water. Oh yeah, one thing I should have mentioned is I have these, just these boards, these plywood boards that I just cut up because they come just from the um, like hardware store. They come in big sheets so we just like saw them into these bits. I think it's like we do it into quarters or something. Right, it's into quarters. It's a little bit less than quarters. 
Okay. But so they fit on the shelf properly. Oh, okay. So yeah, we just cut it to the size so that they fit with a little bit of overhang, so you can still grab them easily. Yeah, and so they're thin enough that you can get multiple, the you know, the most on a shelf possible. Right. That's why they're the yeah, size. Yeah, so thing. like three fit on power yeah. shelves. Um, but I, yeah, we made a mistake and got like ones that were too thin. So I recommend to get as thick as possible so that they don't warp. But we use bats and we put them on here, so it doesn't really matter that these aren't um, completely flat. But yeah, so I use these kind of systems so that you can change up the height of your shelf. So if I'm doing plates, I can stack loads of plates up like really thinly. Or if I have like a big vase, I'm like, okay, I need some more space. So it's just really versatile. And I, I use this area for all of my freshly thrown pieces so I can throw, put them on the shelves it's quite useful and then once they're drying I trim them and then I put them up here to dry out um, until they go into the kiln for their bisque firing and then once they're this they go up there so I kind of have like I've sewn the space which works out normally if I don't have like pots everywhere but that's the idea anyway and um, yeah so then I have my bats on here these I have some just for mixing glazes, they're the hand blenders, but I go through them quite a lot because it's like not really their main function for mixing glazes, so I have a few backups. Um, and I just keep my spare buckets under here, and then this is a clay trap, so you can't wash clay down your normal sink or your normal pipes, so you have to either buy a trap, most um, pottery outlets or shops will sell, sell clay traps but they're really expensive they're normally like aimed for like big workshops or schools and that kind of thing so we did our homemade um, well the Harry Potter made our homemade clay trap which is like basically like two buckets the clay kind of um, sinks to the bottom and then the water gets drained out of this one into that and then out to the pipe but um, there's a couple of people that have we I think you made this from something this is kind line. of a mashup of a few of the people's designs there's a two bucket design and a three bucket I've taken like the three bucket design and made it for two buckets it's kind of what I did but the more buckets you can have the cleaner the water's gonna be when it comes out the end yeah so then yeah we just have a normal sink so we just like made a frame well the Harry Potter stand made a frame for us and put the put a sink on top and then I just have all of my bits up these are the kind of like awkward bits that are really annoying to like store away so I just have them up so I know where they are and then um, up here I have all my other tools so it's just from Ikea these are paintbrushes, loop tools and all of my like carving tools I have for Kuranuki oh yeah top tip if you want a clay paddle and you don't want to paint a clay paddle or make one just search butter paddle and they even come with the texture as well because you know then you can also double it up for when you want to smack the butter yeah so that's great and then i have these ties actually just for like clay bags to tie up they're just because in the uk they come with like just like metal wire and it really hurts your fingers especially when it's cold and wet um spray obviously and all my test tiles I just have up here, which I really like to just be able to see all the glazes I have in one go. Um, so these are the two clays. I have my throwing clay up the top, which is the speckled high iron stoneware. And then this is the lighter clay I use for my Kuranuki hand-built ceramics. Um, so I can see the differences. You do get quite a difference, like this one is the same. These two. So it comes out obviously much lighter on the um, Light to play. Oh, this is just a new glaze I'm really excited about. I'll just show you. It's just like we've been after, it doesn't come off so nice in camera, but we've been after like this dark green glossy glaze for a while and nailed it. Yeah, so then that's that. And then I usually try to keep these shelves free ish. All my clay that I've reclaimed goes down there just in bags. Um, here is just like where I keep student work or students' works or like pieces that aren't mine or that I need to like remember something. I just leave that space for that. So 
So these are just some wheel thrown works from my wheel thrown class from my students. Just they look so nice. I was so impressed. This is like the first time that they threw. I couldn't believe it. They look great. So yeah, that's just um, a couple of students waiting to pick up their work. And I usually keep this space free for like stationery, my previous studio notebooks, and then my, I usually come into the studio and put my current one there. So it always has a space, it doesn't get dirty. <laughs> and then here I just have my smaller tools. So these are the tools that um, is like a super safe way to keep all your scalpels life side up. You kind of live life on the edge. <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of don't go rummaging here. I like take that <laughs> um, And then this is all of my diamond core tools. So because I do a lot of carving and I do a lot of carving when the clay is quite dry, I really recommend you use, if you can, they're a bit pricey. They're from the US as well. So depending if you can get it in your country, but the diamond core tools are great. These are just some spare plaster bats. And then, yeah, I will keep all of my work that's drying out up here. Um, so this is all actually Kuranuki. I've shaped all of this for our next shop updates. But yeah, I'll leave my uh, mailing list link down below if you're interested. Um, you can join our mailing list and we just send, we literally send like two emails per month. One just reminding you of the shop update and one for the link of the shop update when it's gone live. So we don't spam or anything like that. Um, yeah, so then these are... Yeah, we're, we're making some tiles actually for the bathroom. So these are just sun drying out, which will look like this at the end. But we have like 400 and something to go. But yeah, these are the, this is the color scheme for the bathroom basically. So yeah. Be exciting though to make all those, it's just, um, a lot of work. Oh yeah, up the top before I forget, I have lots of these empty boxes at the moment, which means I have been a very good potter and reclaimed everything. Um, but yeah, because I do kuranuki, which means you hollow out from a piece of clay, you have such a lot of offcuts that I put them all up there, I let them dry out, and then I will add water and then put them on the plaster bats to dry out so that's the kind of cycle and then I try to leave these areas free for like bisque wear and then final glazed stuff when an order's finished it will just go there so I keep that separate and then I can sand everything and then put it in the house to get packaged up the Harry Potter does all of the packing of the orders Lucky so me. he does them in the office in the house yeah, let me know actually if you want to see our, how we've got the office set up. We have it set up for photos, just normal computer work and then the packaging. Um, but yeah, let me know if you want a little tour of that, I can do that. Uh, I just keep all my aprons up here. We recently had a trip to Belgium where we were teaching some Kuranuki classes. Um, but they have an amazing shop there called Dilly and Camille. I think it tra <laughs> translates to Dill and, cam and Chamomile. In Dutch, yeah. Yeah, so um, they have, it's like one of those shops that they have like literally everything. And they had some really nice aprons. So I treated myself to some new aprons that are on brand colours. <laughs> um, so I keep my aprons there. Broom, mop, very important. Always clean the studio. I need to clean the studio more. Um, so yeah, we put these shelves up. I just kind of wanted an area to just display some works. Um, so the top row are actually like cottages that have like a small defect or something that I can't sell them. I might put them up for seconds, but it's actually a good way of, for me to have some cottages. We usually sell out of our cottages, so it's very rare for me to actually have some. Um, so this is actually really good for me to like look back onto previous kind of cottages I made. Um, and then I also have my mugs. I want to do also do another five that says Earth. <laughs> but we were waiting on a couple of glazes that we wanted to add to the collection, but I'm going to do that soon. So you should be able to see Earth in future videos. Um, so these are the initial mugs we make. So you can choose the glaze color and the letter of your choice. Um, and then these make really nice gifts, like kind of thoughtful gifts. Um, we get quite a lot of these around Christmas time, people ordering them. And then we have some plant pots that I really need to photograph. <laughs> Um, these are new as well. Again, we want to add them into the core collection and these are kind of a sneak peek of some 
oil slash wax burners that we are releasing soon as well. So these are kind of um, inspired by all the broken plant pots you have lying around that we always have lying around. So um, I think they're gonna look really cool. So the tea light goes in there and then you can pop in wax melts or oil, like essential oils, um, which I think will look really cool. So yeah, those are gonna be released soon. And then here I keep free just for shop updates. So we're having a shop update. This will go up, up after the shop update, but we're gonna have one in a couple of days. So that's why everything is in the house. It's not on this shelf, but we keep that free for changing pots for that. Down here I have all of my medium glazes. So these are my glazes that aren't in these really big buckets that I have on the floor. Yeah, so we keep our most common glazes in these big buckets so we can make big batches of them and we put them on these casters. So these are actually for pots, are they? For plant, plant pots? Plant pots, yeah. Yeah, for moving around plant pots, but they're perfect for these buckets. Um, so when it's full, it's really hard to move around, so these make it just much easier so you can just roll them around and I keep all of those under this table so they're out of the way. Yeah so here I keep my test tiles like these and then just some small dishes and kind of small bisque stuff. I have some spare tiles at the back, um, just some gloves, scales. These are my actual test tiles because they've been glazed. Most of them are up there on the wall but I have some that I keep down here that are on your traditional kind of standy test tile and then we have some we were doing some tests with porcelain as well so they live there and this is all my classic hand building stuff so canvas and then spaces when I cut out slabs and lastly I think it's the other side Bits for my cottages, so I just have stuff that I press into the clay. So I have this kind of crumbled up slate. So that is on these cottages, this stone cottage. And then I have um, like shells and just interesting things to press into the clay. And then I have another one of underglazers. So I keep them all together in here. My favourites are the um, Amoco, yeah, these ones, the Amoco underglazers are the best. And yeah, and then this is my banding wheel, which I use a lot for the Kuranuki, can't be without that. So that just lifts up there, down there. I just try not to pack the shelves too much, just so it's easy to get things in and out. Oh yeah. I, this is all electrics, but I really recommend, even though she doesn't listen to you all the time, but if you're like, Alexa, play Radio 2. Playing BBC Radio 2. BBC it Sounds. Means, oh, Alexa, what time is it? It's 3.19pm. <laughs> Alexa, stop so we don't get demonetised. <laughs> Thank you. So it's just good if you're like covered in clay and you need to know the time or if you need to know if you want to play the radio or like stop the radio or pause it, it means you don't have to like fiddle with anything. So it's good. We actually also have it connected to the house so I can be like, Alexa announce, la 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 la, and then it goes directly to Paul. Alexa announce, can Paul come and film this thing? Then he'll come and film. <laughs> Like now. Oh, see. <laughs> la 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 la. I think it's very interesting. Let's announce. Can Paul come and film this thing? Then it'll come. So, yeah, something like that. And then it goes into the office. Um, yeah, so that's my very small, but I think it's like compact, but we've got it set out that really works for us. Um, and if I. Th just thought it might help you if you're thinking about setting up your own pottery studio or um, just want to get ideas of layout and everything. I really recommend that you just like play around. We moved things around a lot when we moved in to make sure it was working correctly for us. So don't be afraid just to like move stuff around. Um, it's really important. Um, 
And then is there anything, oh yeah, something that we don't have in here is our glaze materials. So we have another building that we have storage for all of our glaze materials and Paul, the Harry Potter, makes um, all the glazes in that building. So that also keeps that area contained because glaze, glaze powders or materials that go into glaze can be toxic as well. So you have to make sure you use a respirator and I just didn't like the idea of having it all that stuff in here as well and there wouldn't be any any space for it anyway um, so yeah we're lucky that we have a few different buildings where we can keep that stuff in and it means that I have more space to work in here oh yeah maybe I'll show you around here I forgot we actually just store all of our clay down here on the side of the studio you can store it outside it doesn't really matter it will just if it rains a lot it might leak into the bag and get a bit more mushy or it might dry out a bit more but it means we can order like at least half a ton of clay at a time so yes that's it so i hope you enjoyed that and um let me know down below if you have any questions about the studio i'll try to link everything i mentioned and i know i've been very quiet on here recently we just setting up the studio just took much longer than we thought and um we're gonna try to upload hopefully twice a month um, in the future with hopefully hopefully doing like one more vlog just what I'm doing that week and one like specific tutorial of how to make something um, but let me know in the comments if there's something that you really want to see from us uh, otherwise I'll put our website down below if you want to see any other tutorials um, and also uh, we have a mailing list for um, our shop updates if you'd like to get involved in that but otherwise happy pottering until next time bye